Hey guys, this is Zach with Team Covenant, and I'm here with Steven. And uh, we are here to do a brief demo of the Star Wars LCG that we got at Fantasy Flight's World Championship Weekend. And also to answer some questions. There are. There are Frequently a lot of, asked questions. We've been demoing the game a lot at the store, and players have a handful of questions that come up a lot. And we'll be answering those through the course of this video. Uh, but yeah, we'll be giving you the basic rundown, and we'll be playing this fantastic game that we've come to know and love. I, I think, long story short, the game is a lot more different than uh, than a lot of people give it credit for. You try to put it in this box, oh, it's like this game or it's like that game, but it has a lot going on in it, and uh, so there's a lot of questions that come up. Definitely some subtleties that you don't pick up on. So before we get started and actually start the game, I do want to go over the point of the game, which is how you win. Um, I'm the dark side player. I've chosen the Imperial Navy as my affiliation. Um, Steven is playing light side, and he is playing as the smugglers and spies. Um, has a card steps of the turn and whatnot. Um, my point in this game, um, this is not a, we're both aiming for the same goal. My point in the game is to get this Death Star dial to 12. It actually starts off at zero, and uh, through various effects it goes up throughout the game, the biggest of which is at the start of every one of my turns it clicks up by at least one. Um, the light side player's objective is to destroy three objectives, and we'll get to what those are in a second, and we'll actually get those on the board. But his aim is to th destroy three of my objectives before I get to 12. So with that, sweet. Let's, uh, let's get started. So the first thing you do is each player draws six cards from the top of their deck. First thing, draw six. Seems reasonable. Yeah, and now draw happens before we actually reveal or put objectives into play. Um, so we'll get our hands, and we will be looking to see if we want to keep them or not. Mm. In Star Wars, like many games, mm. there's a mulligan rule. And uh, the mulligan rule is, starting with the dark side player, I can actually pitch my hand, shuffle it back into my deck, and draw six again. I will not be doing that, because I like the cards I have in my hand. Oh, yeah, there's no way. This is probably the best hand I've ever had. Well, that's going to be great. All right, so now we've both decided to keep our hand. For me. And uh, what we do is we have our objective deck, which is ten objectives that we bring to the game. Um, and we'll take the top four. We shuffle them up. We do shuffle them up and cut them, which we did before the video started. I'll I did, at give least. The, give the camera a little, uh, a little love there. Four objectives. Boom. So we'll look through here, and we each pick three. Um, I will not be taking that one. The one you don't pick goes on the bottom of your objective stack, and that's important because later, if objectives leave the table, um, you'll replace them from the top of the stack in whatever order they were randomly put in at the first of the game. So, and the way this works is we actually, starting with me, I reveal one at a time, uh, and I trigger any effects that the plot has when it comes, or the objective has when it comes into play. Um, so I'll play this one, nothing. Shadows of Death Romir, Death Yep. Mm. Um, the Emperor's Web, and the Imperial Command. So none of these have any effects, any interrupts or reactions when they come out, so they're out, and we're good to go. Now you. Alright, I will start with a hero's journey. Uh, the secret of Yavin 4 has an interrupt when one of your other objectives is engaged. Your opponent engages this objective instead, so that's not applicable right now. And then last minute rescue. Similar thing, after I refresh, I can remove the damage from a target unit. Very nice. Ha ha! Alright, so now we got our objectives out, and we have our hands. Uh, the only thing left to do is start the game. Um, so the game pits the dark side player versus the light side player um, in a battle of the force. Uh, he's the light side, I'm the dark side. And there's this token which represents the balance of the force. Now this starts in favor of the light side, which looks like this. Um, but at some point could be in favor of the dark side, which looks like that, undoubtedly. So it starts in his favor, and we'll leave it there. Um, my balance phase happens because I'm the dark side player. I always go first. Uh, because the balance of the force is in his favor, it's just going to be the standard balance phase, which means the Death Star dial picks up by one. Important thing, right? So, like, if this thing is uh, is on the light side, it only applies whenever it's the light side's balance phase that this effect actually happens, right? Yep, it's an added bonus. So, at the start of my turn, assuming it was in the dark side's favor, um, the Death Star dial would actually click up by two. But, because it's in the light side's favor, nothing happens. Now, if it was his turn and it's in the light side's favor, he actually will get to do place a damage on one of my objectives, Sweet. which... My goal is to get this to 12, so it helps me. His goal is to destroy three of these. It helps him. So balance phase happens. This clicks up by one. We're good to go. The next thing that happens is refresh. Now, when you use things throughout the game, you put these tokens on them, which are called focus. And during the refresh phase, you actually pull off one focus from every card on your side of the board. I don't have anything that's been spent yet, so nothing happens. We'll get to that when it actually happens. Let's, I got to say, for force tokens, it's a weird symbol. Isn't it? 
Is this, what's Forcey about that? You see anything? Pokeball? Uh, no, I mean, it's just a focus token. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm not trying to derail the demo or anything. It's, it's kind of bizarre. Yeah, it, it just, uh, I, I don't know. It just looks like a token to me. Come on, give me answers. Um, anyways, uh, so refresh phase. Now, during the draw phase, uh, one thing is important. Each player starts the game with what's called a reserve value of six. Um, that's your, your hand size, basically. And the reserve value only matters during the draw step where, e during my draw step, I draw up to or discard down to my reserve value. So it starts at six. We start with six cards in our hand. Uh, but one thing to note is that during the draw phase, I can actually discard a card from my hand. So I'll look through here. So the first thing you can do in the draw phase is discard one, yep. so you can draw more, basically. Totally. So I'm going to discard one of my cards, which is Stormtrooper Elite, Whew. and then I get to draw back up to my reserve value, which is six. So I'll put another card in my hand. You're going to discard one card? Only one card per turn. All right, so stage four of the turn is the deployment phase. The, now the resources in this game are really interesting. Um, they don't work like most games I've played, where you gather your resources and then you spend them. Uh, what happens is you have cards in play that actually provide resources. And if you look, um, each objective over on the right side actually has a resource value, um, which this has two. And also the affiliation card that we both brought to the table uh -huh. has a resource value. Um, and the way this works uh, is a card on the top left has a cost, and I'll take a focus token. Um, and I can pay for it by putting a token on something that provides a resource. Now, this right here is an enhancement, so it comes into play on my side of the table, it'll stay there, um, and it actually says enhance an objective, so I could attach it and give an objective plus three health. Now, I'm not gonna play that card. I know you got it, though. You do know I have it. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pay two for control room. Now, what this does is, let's actually go here. Now, where I place these tokens is really important. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but cost two, um, and it actually provides two resources. Now, one thing really interesting to note about this game is the moment a card enters play, it can be used, whether it's a character to attack or block or like this to provide resources. So I spent two. Um, now, when I'm also playing stuff, there's something else going on. Each card has what's called an affiliation, um, and we each brought an affiliation to the table. And that affiliation is what kind of resource it provides. When I play a card, I've got to use at least one resource of that affiliation. So in this case, it's an Imperial card, so I had to spend at least one from one of my Imperial resources. And that's called resource match. So that's really important to note when you're playing stuff or saving resources to play things on your opponent's turn. Ah. So, question, if I have like a bunch of Imperial Navy cards in my hand, but I don't have any Imperial Navy objectives, and I'm not playing the Imperial Navy affiliation, then I just can't play for pay for those cards, basically. Right. Those are cards you'll probably discard during the draw phase or using what's called an edge battle, which we'll get to in a minute. So no card ever becomes totally useless, um, just less useful than you'd hope it'd be when you put it in your deck. Sweet. Um, so I'll play that, and I've got, it looks like, six resources remaining. Um, and now I'm going to do what's called an event. If you look at this card, uh, Dark Precognition, it's cost zero. Um, it's of the Sith affiliation, which doesn't really matter so much because it costs zero. Uh, what it says is action, draw two cards, then choose one and discard. So I'll draw two, and then I have to discard a card. So I'll actually discard that defense upgrade that I showed you earlier. Um, and then I can keep playing stuff. So I will, in the spirit of this game, uh, play Emperor Palpatine. Now, what? He costs six, um, so I'm gonna take six focus tokens and place them on resource producing cards. Um, he's of the Sith affiliation, so at least one has to be from Sith, which these two are. Put two there, two here, which is this max, and two here. Um, and now I'm completely spent on all my resources. Um, the only thing I can play at this point are free cards. Uh, and that's the deployment phase. So I played an enhancement that enhances my play area, stays around, I played a unit that stays on the board, and now we'll go to the next stage. So worth noting is stage five is conflict. During the dark side of player's first turn, I actually don't get to conflict. You look so conflicting, though. I know, right? The Emperor wants to, wants to go at you. But uh, there isn't, in the long run of the game, if I play the Emperor, first turn he comes in, he can do something. But in this case, because it's my first turn, I can't actually attack. So we'll go ahead and skip conflict and we'll go to the Force phase. During the Force phase, you can actually do something interesting. You can do what's called committing a character to the Force, which I will do with the Emperor. What this does is determines whether the balance of the Force is on the light side, or the dark side. So uh, we can each commit characters to the force, and during the force phase, the first thing you do is commit. You can have up to three characters committed, 
And once a character is committed, he can't become uncommitted unless he happens to get disposed of. Oh, wow. So uh, once you commit, then it's there until it's not there. So now the Emperor is committed. Unless he dies, he will be committed for the entirety of the game. Hmm, interesting. So what does committing do for you? Uh, the first thing is it determines the balance of the Force. So during the Force phase, which is stage six, um, we actually count up Force icons, which are these gray icons along the side of the card. And the player with the most Force icons committed to the Force gets the balance of the Force. So in this case, I've got five, and you have none. So I'll flip this over. And the balance of the force is now with the dark side. And that will actually conclude my turn. Now, one other thing to note about a committed character is when they are focused to strike, which is attacking or defending, they actually take two focus instead of one. And we'll get to what that means in a minute. But that's so, kind of the negative of committing to the force. So if they're committed to the force, they're like, uh, I think it's been described as like they're meditating, they're like, they're, using the, they're locked away in the chamber, they're like focused down on, with the force. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's my turn. And now it will become the light side player's turn. All right, so it comes back over to me. And we start out with the first phase, which is the balance phase. So we uh, can see that the force is with the dark side, which means I don't get to do anything fancy on the balance phase. Or, correct? correct. All right, so then we go to the refresh phase, where I could refresh stuff, but apparently there's something, something suspicious going on with the light side in the first refresh phase. So, Zach, is it that the light side can't actually refresh on their first phase of the game, or first uh, turn of the game? So on the light side player's first turn, they actually skip the refresh stage. And this is actually important. I had this come up in a game the other day. Uh, you could play events or reactions during my turn on my first turn, uh, and actually spend resources on my turn. Uh, and if that happens, you actually still skip the refresh phase of your first turn. So okay. So this prevents me from front-loading tons of events on you during your first turn, and then getting it all back. I see. All right, so first round, you skip the conflict phase, I skip the refresh phase, and then we go to the draw phase, where I draw up to my reserve of six, but I have six cards, so I can discard one if I want. And I just like everything so much. I'm not gonna do it, so no draw. Then we go to the deployment, okay. So, first thing I will do is I will force my, uh, let's see, let's do, uh, Yavin 4 for a Dagobah training grounds. Very nice. In hint your play area, it's limited, so I can't play more than one of a limited card each turn, and it just provides me one resource. So this is kind of just a, a building of resources going on here. Um, and then, let's see, I've got uh, two, three, four, five resources left. There's a lot of fun things to do with five resources. Um, oh. How much do I want that force? That's a tough, tough, tough situation to be in. Let's do... Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to pay three. So I'll force here, here, and here. Okay. For Yoda. Very nice. Ooh. Hmm. Then I will uh, pay one for the Shicho training. However, since I have the uh, the thing out, I think no wait, I, I don't have it. That's the one I chucked. Drat. All right, so I will force. Uh, uh oh, we're doing it. All right, so Yoda gets. This attached to him. So this actually attaches to him, right? Yes, he has Shicho training from the old from the old days. Now, quick question. If I were at this point, all my stuff is, is spent here, but I have a two here on this guy. So then uh, can you then just kind of put another resource on this and play another one cost, or what's the deal with that? You cannot. Um, the, the general idea is that if something has a focus on it, at least one, it can't be used. So if it has one on it, you can't use it for something else. So if you wanted to use both, you would have had to use them both at the same time. All right. So then let's do, hmm. I will attack here. What are you attacking? I'm going to attack. Uh, so in Star Wars, you have to attack one of the three objectives uh, here on the dark side, or if the dark side's attacking, Three objectives here, so you have three potential targets. I can't attack Zach directly, 
so sometimes you want to. Can attack his uh, structures, can attack his characters. I'm shooting at one of these three objectives and he has the choice to throw something in the way. And I am going to choose uh, this guy. Okay, you're gonna attack the Imperial Command? The Imperial Command, yeah. Um, so, worth noting that you can only attack each objective once per turn. So if you get a lot of characters out, attacking this means that that's your one attack at that objective this turn. Um, do I want to block or not? Now Yoda has a couple interesting things going on, um, which it's, it's fair to get into how conflict works at this point. Um, along right here on the characters are the, basically the, the various strike icons they have. So when that character attacks, that's what they do. Um, Yoda actually has all three on him, so he's a really, really good example. Uh, the first of which matches up to this focus icon. Um, and so when he attacks, he actually get a gets to put a focus on any of my characters, whether or not they're blocking. So this guy icon's correlates to basically the ability to tie something on Zaxo of the board down. Totally. Um, the second icon, which is a gun, represents character damage. That's a blaster pistol. Blaster pistol. Um, so if I blocked with the Emperor and he got and Yoda was able to attack, he would actually get to do a damage to me. And the third kind, which is a starburst, um, it actually represents objective damage. So assuming he actually successfully attacks, he would do a damage to the objective he attacked. Now there's the difference between the black icons and the white icons. Very critical. So um, when an engagement actually happens, uh, we have what's called an edge battle. And black is something that happens when you strike no matter what. White, you only gain access to those icons if you win the edge battle. And we'll walk through an edge battle in a minute. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm not going to block. Whoa. So, uh, Yoda attacks the objective, and I don't have to block, so I'm not going to. And a few interesting things happen. The first thing is, an edge battle still takes place, uh, but to place cards in an edge battle, you have to have an, a participating unit. And I don't have any, so I'm not going to get to play any. And so Steven could still place cards in the edge battle. And the way an edge battle works is, starting with the attacking player, uh, we would put, he would put a card face down, um, and we go back and forth until we both pass. Now, uh, because I'm not blocking, he's automatically going to win the edge battle. He doesn't have to play anything, but there might be reasons he would want to. So, uh, edge battle happens. Are you going to play any cards? I'm not going to play anything. Okay. So, that doesn't happen. And now, we get to the, the fun part. So, Yoda you just... gets to attack. So, this is an attack coming through uh, to your Imperial Command. Emperor Palpatine has stepped out of the way. Uh, very palpatine -y. So then I'm going to force Yoda to strike. And whenever I force a strike, I can then use these icons. Because it was unopposed, I am assumed to have always won the edge battle if it is an unopposed attack. So these white icons are activated. And Yoda can first start with his little uh, force icon. And I have no choice but to put one on Palpatine there. Then uh, I have a blaster pistol, and then I also have an additional blaster pistol because Yoda gains one for each enhancement he has, and he has one here. Uh, but because there's no participating units, I'm not going to be able to shoot anything because nothing is in my way. So then we go to the objective icon, the objective damage of the starburst. I have one, and then I have an additional one for the enhancement that I have on Yoda there. So I get to strike two at that. And then we determine if there was a defending party or not, right? So after all the forcing is done, after the battle is resolved, if there is nothing standing on the defending side, the attack is considered unopposed, at which point you get to do an additional damage to that objective. So right there, Yoda has struck out and done three damage to that Imperial Command, putting me in a decent place for, uh, for taking out at least one objective. Sure, and it's worth noting on the bottom left of these objectives is the health of the objective, so that's how many damage it can actually take before it gets destroyed. So he did three, the average is about five health, so he's pretty close to destroying one of my objectives. All right, and that is all that I'm gonna do. Then we go to the, con uh, the force phase, and I've got nothing. Uh, you do have something, but it is forced out, so it's not going to contribute its force icons, which means we have a tie for zero. It's important to note, um, if a character has a focus on him, he doesn't count his force icons towards the balance of the force. So at this point, we're both at zero. Um, and in the event of a tie during the force phase, um, the balance of the force stays with whoever has it. So in this case, it'll stay with the dark side. Nice. All right. Well, I feel good about that. All right. So it's my turn again. 
And the first thing we do is balance the force. And because the balance of the force is actually with me this time, uh, the Destro dial is actually going to click up two instead of one. So you're at three? Three. Which is so I'm on the clock here. You are. You've only got, at max, nine turns before this, this game is done. No. Um, so then the second phase is refresh, which I didn't get to do last time, but I will this time. So I take one focus off of every card on my side of the board. It's important to note, uh, objectives that have two resource that I spent two on still have a resource on or a focus on them, so I'll be unable to use those resources this turn. Ah, so whenever you force one of those big resources, if you don't use both, or if you do use both, then you're going to tap them out for the next turn as well. Yeah, for two mm -hmm. turns. So there's, there's kind of a penalty for doing that. Got to accelerate or pace. Big decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we'll get to the draw phase, which I will discard one. And then I'm going to draw back up to six, which is my reserve value. You discarded a sweet looking Vader card over there. The art on that is amazing, but it's not as good as the art wants to be. <laughs> um, so uh, now we're back to my deployment phase, so I'll play things. I'll pay one for a Sith Library. And uh, let me see, how many do I have? Uh, I have two. It's a very uh, That's right. <laughs> unlucrative <laughs> turn for me. That's because it what took a lot to get do? all Palpatine out. Exploded early, but now uh, fading into the distance. You could say that. Into nothingness. We'll see about that. All right, so I'll uh, pay one for an ISB interrogators, and I'll spend here. Weird, ISB interrogators. And uh, that'll be my deployment phase. So we'll go to conflict. Yes. Um, I am not going to conflict. I'm going to stay boring here. Um, okay. And then we get to the force phase, so I get a commit if I want to. You could easily steal that balance. Um, I will go ahead and commit the interrogators. What? Yeah. I just want to make sure that you have to really try to get the force. <laughs> um, and, you know, that'll be my turn. So we'll pass it back to you, and we'll loop back around. All right, pass it back to me. We go to the balance phase, and it's with you, so I get nothing. And then we'll go to the refresh phase, where I get to refresh one off everything. One, two, three, four. Look at all those beautiful resources I've got now. So worth noting, um, on the hero's journey, you didn't spend both last time, but this time now you have access again to That's both. That's right. So it's a benefit to do. I'm that. a pacer. I'm not. I'm a. I'm a closer, as they say. Uh, so then we go to the draw phase. I can discard a card from my hand, uh, which I will not do, and then I'll draw back up. One, two, three. So I'm always, I don't really have to worry about drawing cards. However, important to note, like the more cards that I play out here, the less I have for the edge battles. Right. Which is going to be uh, kind of a crucial thing. So the hand management in this game is, is really, really different. And yeah, it, it's something that adds a lot to the game. Uh, when you really start realizing, if you rush out and play a bunch of things, then you don't have cards on your opponent's turn, it's, it's a huge part of this game. All right, so I'm going to pay two for, uh, I believe in the old ways. All right. A force sensitive. How about that? Uh, and then I'm going to pay two for a Jedi in hiding. So the force is, is getting strong over here. And I'm going to hold back everything else. So, all right, you want to tango again. So now, whenever I'm attacking, I can attack with any number of things together as well. Absolutely. So I can make three different attacks on each of your, one on each of your objectives, or I could swing all three at one objective. Um, this edge battle would be pretty serious. How many cards you got in your hand over there? Five? I am on four cards. I've got four, too. Um, and but it, mine are better than yours. Mm, probably. Um, all right, well, let's just play a little cat and mouse, shall we? Uh, Palpatine is a is a huge issue here. Let's attack with Yoda on the uh, damaged objective. Now this is tough. Uh, that's what we're trying for. So how many uh, how many black? He's many? got two blast icons. One of them is active uh, only when he wins the edge battle. And then he also uh, has two blasters. One only is active when I win the edge battle, and one force you down and make you uh, not useful. I'm not a fan. I know. So uh, let's 
Think about this for a second. And my Shicho training allows me to divide my blasters between participating units. One on the interrogators, one on Palpatine. Hey, it's fine. Or you can just, uh, you know, block this one and then let all my other guys come through. <laughs> this is not helping. Um, all right, well, I'm going to have to do it. The battle we've all been waiting for anxiously. Oh, gosh. I'm going to block with the Emperor. Block with the Emperor. I am. Hmm. Um, all right. Well, let's get down to, to business here. Then we'll start the edge battle here. So we have a first official edge battle of the game. And uh, starting with you, you can put a card face down. Starting with me. Um, I'm going to put a card face down. It's a good one. I promise. All right. So we're entering a really cool phase of the game here. This is the edge battle. And this is... It's one of those things that at first you don't really, you know, you're like, ah, it's kind of weird, uh, kind of a bluffing type thing. But then after a few games, you're like, you're, you're all about the edge battle. And certain cards, even though they might not be great cards, you love just because they have a lot of force icons that you can throw into those edge battles. So I've laid my first card down, and now it's on Zach to lay down a card, or not lay down a card. And uh, we're both kind of fighting here. So if he wins the edge battle, he's going to get initiative, which means he can strike Palpatine first and use all of these icons on my stuff before I can do anything. If I win the edge battle, I get initiative, and I can strike out at Palpatine and his friends before, uh, before he gets the first shot. Also, we're gonna fighting for access to our white icons here as well. So if he wins the edge battle, he's going to get to put three force tokens on my dudes. Um, whereas if I win, I'm going to get to hit his objective harder and do a little bit more damage to Palpatine. So it's a big deal. And the important part here is we both have focus icons. So if I win the edge battle, I can prevent Yoda from striking me. If you win the edge battle, you can prevent Palpatine from striking you. It almost feels cinematic. Almost. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the edge battle just captures like the epic part of Star Wars. Anyways, I had, I'll, you I'll know, I hadn't, really, I hadn't really got it uh, until you really put it in those terms. Okay. That um, feels right. Let's Look at this. This is epic. <laughs> put that card face down. And now you have to determine whether you want to keep going or not. I want to keep going. It's a rabbit hole. Are you man. crazy? Um, well, this is going to be useless if you win the edge battle. Are you bluffing, dude? I don't know, man. <laughs> My problem is I'm not going to get to redraw before your turn. Like, you're going to get a full turn. You're going to get to draw back up to six. I'm going to have whatever I might cards, well my entire hand whatever cards I have left, and then you're going to be able to win any edge battle that you want against me. It's pretty important. Now, it's worth <laughs> noting here, too. There, there's a particular card that basically cancels out the edge battle and makes you do it again called I'm Twisted Fate. I'm nervous about it. But you have three cards down and one left, so I've got a feeling you're not twisting me. This could be Twisted Fate here. <laughs> In a horrible strategic move. I'm crazy enough to do it. This is important to me. So you're always going to do two damage. Put a focus down. No big deal. Just kill an objective. I don't want to get rid of this card. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. You're going to oh, go Lord. all in on me? You're going to be out of cards on my turn? Can, now, can I look at the things I put in the edge battle? Sure. Something tells me that I can't, but I will. This may be against the rules. So you got three, I've got three. I'm a Lebowski, you're a Lebowski. Oh, man. Um, you're going to have six. You're probably going to beat me next turn anyway, right? So I may as well make this one for real. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Put it in. Empty that hand, baby. Oh, man. But we've got more attacks coming. Oh, there's two more. At least. No, let's go for it. Woo! We both went all in. All right, so we're ready to flip. Yeah. Boom. 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 Got right. eight. Two. Four. Five. Eight. Eight. We have ourselves a legitimate tie. So, in an edge battle, when the players tie with the number of force icons they've dropped into the edge battle, the defending player wins the edge battle. Uh, but before we get to any of that, there are what are called fate cards, which Steven happened to play one. Um, 
Fate cards can only be played during an edge battle, and they actually go into the edge stack. Um, and they resolve before anything else happens. So and there is a there's some kind of this number here. So it says fate on this card, and there's a number underneath it nine. Yep. And that's going to determine the order in which these fate cards resolve. Is that yep. right? So if we both play the fate cards, or there were multiple played, you resolve the one with the lowest fate value first. So okay. in ascending order, lowest to highest. Okay. Um, so what does your fate card do? If you're the attacking player, deal one damage to the engaged objective. All right. So you automatically sink a damage through the objective, and it's one health away from dying. Solid. And then I win the edge battle. So I'll get to strike first. Now, any cards we put into the edge battle get discarded. Mm. I did not want to get rid of the Devastator. Mm, well, I That's what I was trying not to do. Anyways, um, so now I'm going to strike with the Emperor. So I'll put a focus on him. He gets to do two objective damage, which doesn't matter because I'm the defender. But then he gets to place three focus. I will put one here, one here. What a surprise. One here. All right, so the Emperor has locked down the board. Um, oh, hold on. I made a mistake. Uh, he's committed to the force, so I actually have to put two focus on him. Correct. Instead of just the one. He's a tired old man. All right. Well, so that will effectively shut down my offensive for the turn. Uh, that edge battle was a very big deal, uh, massively big. And so I'm not going to strike with anything else. I'll end my conflict phase. And then I can kind of plan for the future by committing some people to the force, but there's really no reason for me to do that right now. So I'm going to pass it on over. Okay, so during your force phase, we're tied again. Or actually, I have one, so the balance stays with me, and we'll proceed to my turn. Right. Okay, so it would come back to me, and we'd go through all the steps again, balances with me, so this would click out by two. Uh, I'd refresh and draw all the way back up to six, and we'd go back and forth. Um, at this point, Death Star Dial would be at five. You've almost removed an objective, so we're both kind of marching towards our goal. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's the basic, like, and the flow of the game. Yes. And it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing. It really, the game is uh, fascinatingly good whenever you play it more and more. I mean, notice I didn't commit anything to the Force, and because you've been able to keep the Force with you during the game, um, you sacrifice some to do that. So, like this guy, you really didn't want to throw him into anything because he's going to be out of the, of the match for two rounds. Because any time you attack or defend with something that's committed to the force, it gets two uh, force tokens rather than uh, or focus tokens rather than one. So what that is, what that equates to is um, whenever you refresh, you only remove one icon. So anything that's committed to the force for it to do anything, it takes a lot of effort. So it's going to be uh, not fully refreshed until two turns from when they do it. Um, what really I think the one of the keys that helped me whenever I was reading through the rules and, and kind of figuring out what to do and how all this stuff worked is if you ever want to do anything with a card, you have to force it. And the only way you can force a card is that there's not currently any force tokens on that card. So like the, the resources that have two on them, if you force it, you can put up to two tokens on there. But then, you know, next turn when it already has a force token on it, then you can't then force it to get that additional resource that's now free. Um, so you can only ever force anything that doesn't have a focus token on it. And then committing to the force, you can still use that stuff. Like you said, like with Palpatine, you can still use them. Um, you can still attack with them and defend with them. The only thing that checks for that is whether or not they have the focus token on them. If it's there, then that unit cannot do anything or that resource can't be activated or yada yada, etc. So I think that's one of the key things that helped me too in the battles. Um, one of the things we probably should go over is like, let's say I were to have multiple people coming at you. All right, so I have three. Um, and let's say you have all, all of your guys in this battle. So let's, if I win the edge battle, then I can focus or force one of these units to strike. So let's say I focus the believer or force the believer to strike. Then I can activate and use these icons. So I might do one damage here and one objective damage. But then it goes to you, and then you focus something to strike. So I can <coughs> focus here as an example, not that I would. And I would do a character damage. So right. I can actually do a damage here. Now if you'll notice, the character health is down here in the bottom left, and he only has one health, so he'd immediately be removed from the so game. So then he's immediately gone, and we then go to the next person, Yoda. Okay, then he goes, and he activates and does his stuff. And then if Palpatine is still unfocused, he could then force to do his thing. So. It's not that one side completely goes and the other side completely goes. Whoever's initiative gets the first strike, and then we pass it ping pong it back and forth. Absolutely. Now it's also worth noting, when a character is removed from play like that, um, he's not considered dead or gone forever. Um, it's just a discard pile. So if you did have another copy in your deck, you could play him again. 
or if you had some way of getting back to your hand, he's not gone forever. He's only gone until he comes back. Absolutely. And one more thing in conflicts while we're here is uh, if I'm in a conflict, let's say you you know you don't uh, defend or something, and I can ju I can focus Yoda, and then I might think, well, I want to save the believer in the old ways in this battle and not focus them to strike so that they'll come back. But you can't do that. Once something is in a battle, you have to focus it, no matter if there's any enemies left, if you want to or not. Everything that is participating in that battle is going to come back with a focus. Sure. Icon on and it. sometimes you know you'll destroy the objective with the first character. And then you won't want to strike with the other characters because all the opponents are dead, all the objective damage is done. But in that case, they already participate in the attack, so they have to be focused. Right, right, right. All right, so uh, you want to give a rundown of kind of just some, uh, some more questions or some confusion that we had early on in the game? Anything that uh, needs clarification, you think? The edge battle was covered. We have the balance phase where you kind of determine um, what's happening with the force and uh, what the effects of that are. Then you have the refresh phase. You only remove one focus icon from everything, right? Yep. Um, and then the draw phase, I think discarding a card at the very beginning of the turn is important, at the very beginning of the phase, very, very important. important. So you can always discard one, only one, at the beginning of the draw. That gives you an, a way to basically draw a card if you need to refresh that hand a little bit. Then your deployment, you, hit, you fo focus the resources or force the resources. That activates any number of their resource uh, number there. So if I force Hero's Journey, I can get up to two uh, worth of resources out of that. And I put two focus on it to do that, um, play stuff out. And one thing we haven't really covered is the ability for you to play stuff on your opponent's turn. Absolutely. So I can give you an example of that. Um, there are cards called events that you can actually play almost any time. Uh, there's a lot of action windows. Attacking is an action, and then he would get the next action back and forth. Uh, but event cards, they say event right here, they have a cost just like everything else. And they say action or reaction, and it just whatever it says happens. So in this case, deal damage to a target character or creature. So I could actually put a damage on one of your characters on your turn. So maybe the one health guy you had earlier, you attack with, I could kill him before he even gets to do anything. Right, so your opponent having resources open on your turn is often a, an indicator of something is about to happen. Absolutely. Force lightning, force choke. Or this double strike, for instance. This is a, a reaction that says, after a character unit is focused to strike, remove one focus token from that unit. So in this kind of an instance, if I had one with Yoda, I could have uh, focused Yoda and then use this reaction by paying one on a resource over here to then remove this, which would allow Yoda to Attack strike again, again yeah. which is why it's a double strike. So, yep. And uh, one thing we didn't get to, this should be its own little section, is uh, what happens when an objective is destroyed. Mm. So uh, a couple things. Uh, if light side player destroys a dark side objective, he takes it and he puts it on his side of the board in his victory pile. Uh, now, I don't get to use this or use the resources. No, this is just, just kind of, once I have three, I, I yeah. win. Um, now, I don't replace the objective immediately. Um, the objective actually gets replaced during my refresh step. So if you did it on your turn, we keep going, refresh strap, I take the top objective from my objective deck, and it comes into play. And you resolve any kind of reactions or something. Any reaction that it has when it comes out happens, um, and however it interacts with the board. Now, if I destroy a light side objective, I also take it immediately. Uh, but the bonus for the dark side for destroying objectives, because I could destroy 10 and still not win the game, technically. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so when I destroy an objective, I actually click the Death Star dial up by one. But it's not just one, it's one for every objective I've destroyed. So the first one is one, but the second one... And then during my refresh phase, I would, I would get a new one, right? Absolutely. But during, if yeah, I destroy a, a second one. objective, um, so the one. Death Star dial actually will click up by two. It's just <gasps> one. So by the time I destroy a third objective, it's clicking up by three. And uh, usually that's towards the end of the game. I have destroyed a third objective and not won the game um, until I've destroyed the fourth objective. But if you destroy a fourth objective, it clicks up by four, and so on. Um, the tenth objective would be ten, which is why it's almost impossible to do that. <laughs> um, but who knows? And who knows where the game will go? Absolutely. There, you know, are, there are already cards that click it down, the Death Star dial, on the light side. So uh, who knows indeed? Um, who knows indeed? <laughs> who knows indeed? Uh, so there we go. We, you, got the you got the deployment, how to play the conflict. It's Pretty straightforward. Um, some of the crucial things is you don't ever do objective damage if you're the defender. You only ever do objective damage on the offense. 
However, you do get the force uh, or the focus, uh, focusing down your opponent's characters. You can do that on the defense or on offense. And blaster icons, defense or offense, but they only apply to participating units unless there's an ability that says otherwise, which there is in the game, targeted strike and maybe a few others. Absolutely. Um, so that, I think, is a quick rundown of the Star Wars LCG. Do we have any more, uh, any questions you can think of, things that have come up kind of off the cuff? I remember there was a few things, but I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, I think we hit on all the pretty intricate, you know, can you attack on your first turn or can you use focus or, you know, is there an edge battle when I attack and you don't block kind of thing. So having played now a little while, uh, what would you say, you did a review. Um, I did. A, a quick review a little while ago. So what would you say, having played even more Star Wars and really seeing the game for what it is, is this the Star Wars game that we've been waiting for, I guess? <laughs> uh, I would argue yes. Um, the first couple of times, I wasn't quite sure, but by now, um, the character and all the cards, the flavor matches exactly what you hope it is. Um, the feel for Star Wars is just so on point with just... The, the edge battles being the epic points of the conflict and like even our edge battle in our demo where it came down to who had more force icons to pitch to the side. Uh, but you know it's cool too because sometimes like the rebels you get knocked down and you have to get back up and you can win games absolutely when you're behind. Like in, this, in our demo game I think I had an advantage at that point but nowhere near over. Right. Um, absolutely not over and it, it would have been a struggle to the end. So having played the CCG and the TCG um, pretty extensively, what would you say to players of either or both that uh, you know, haven't played a Star Wars card game in a while? Um, is, is this kind of a, a good iteration of, uh, of what's to come for Star Wars? Is this really a, a, a card game worthy of the label, I guess you could say? Because you know, the CCG was great. The I, TCG I, had I its audience, both. which was us. I absolutely love both. Um, I think... The task of creating a Star Wars game, um, to me, is a lot like whoever gets tasked with making Episode 7, uh, which is terrifying because it's a huge thing. People expect a lot. They want something amazing. And uh, I think Fantasy Flight did something that would be very tough to pull off. And they created a Star Wars game that is absolutely nothing like any other Star Wars game I've ever played, but still very, very true to the flavor and the game of Star Wars. A blast to play and the, the expandability here and where they could go with this is just amazing. I'm very excited about it and can't wait to see what they do next. It's very impressive. All right, so that concludes our uh, Star Wars LCG demo and uh, just kind of a rundown of some frequently asked questions. If you have any more questions, hit us up on the comments or on our YouTube page, uh, the comments on our YouTube page, or you can send an email to support at teamcovenant.com. And uh, we also have this game for sale, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah? Absolutely. Teamcovenant.com slash store. You can pick up this as well as the Force Packs when they start releasing. Um, we will be adding the ability to have the Force Pack subscription where you can subscribe to get the Force Packs delivered to your door without having to worry about it. And uh, we'll be playing it and do more videos, and uh, it'll be exciting. We'll be playing it a lot. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys.